This talk is given by James Arlen. It's on SCADA and ICS, how to avoid cyber douchery. Good afternoon, everybody. Everybody sliding into a nice pasta coma after lunch. <clears throat> so, hi. We're going to talk about SCADA, but we're going to talk about SCADA in a bit of a different way uh, than you've ever really heard before. Um, this is for good reason, uh, because entirely too many people are talking when they really shouldn't be talking. Uh, my name is James Arlen. Uh, I have some credentials, been at this for a while. Uh, I do operations work, I do consulting work, I deal with utilities vertical, I deal with financial vertical, and I'm not an expert. And that's going to be a bit of a recurring theme. Uh, this is not a talk about SCADA, it's a talk about talking about SCADA, uh, because uh, as an industry we need to train ourselves uh, to know when it's a good time to talk and when it's a good time to listen, and we suck hard at the listening part. Um, there's some technical material. I don't want to, but I'm going to talk about Smart Grid, which is not SCADA. I'm going to talk about Siemens and Stuxnet, which is not SCADA either. Uh, and you will not be an expert walking out of here. You cannot be trained to be an expert in this stuff in a day. Don't even try. So the first problem we have is there's a lot of stupid going around. And there's, there's good reasons for this. You know, when, when you look at what happened about 2005, um, just as SOX was trailing off in terms of consulting revenue budget, um, the information security industry noticed SCADA. And, well, you know what happens. You identify a market and you figure out how to move into that market. Um, in this case, it, it's just money, frankly. Uh, it's very large consulting organizations that were built on the back of the Y2K hump that turned into the SOX hump that turned into the critical infrastructure hump and it's just sad, frankly. Um, the interesting part though is that simultaneously with a whole lot of consultants looking for jobs, uh, there's new regulations that were coming into effect. You were looking at ISA 99 coming into effect and the NERC 1200 urgent action standard. Um, and because a packet is a packet is a packet, of course, if you're in IT security, you know everything there is to know about SCADA, don't you? I mean, it's just another protocol. Um, so suddenly you had, you know, a million SCADA security experts, and um, then things got religious. Uh, you guys know about the three major security religions, the uh, ISC squared, the ISACA, and the SANS. Um, one of those religions picked up on this thing and ran like crazy directly to Congress. Um, at this point, I was working in control system security. Uh, I was doing electricity in particular, and as much as I could, I tried pointing out to people that the way that IT security was approaching it was the wrong way. And I got about as far as you can expect. Uh, I needed to develop a much larger ego to be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with IT security people because they can't check their egos at the door. Um, while I was doing this work in, in, in the, the electricity sector, um, all of a sudden I had swarms of consultants around me. And it, it's very interesting the kind of um, vulture-like behavior when they can smell something that needs to be dealt with. And a bunch of consultants, some InfoSec dudes and dudettes showed up and they started telling me that they knew control system security. So as a person sitting there responsible for control system security, I was somewhat shocked and awed. I wasn't really good at my job yet. I had a ton more to learn, uh, but they were experts. Um, they tied a nice little bow on my problems and they told me that they could fix it. All my problems could be solved. All I needed were a few blinky lights and a few shiny things and it was all gonna be fine. If I bought these boxes and I put them in, it was all good. Yeah. So I told you we're going to talk about SCADA systems. Here's the short form part of it. Um, the language is very, very important. And manipulating language is something that engineers really enjoy. Uh, they often treat language just like they would treat anything else. There are levels of precision. There are levels of correctness. There are levels of the right words. 
uh, they're kind of a lot like car people. And our industry has been not meeting them on their ground, but meeting them on ground that we created because we thought it sounded good. Um, <clears throat> when we're talking about something that looks an awful lot like a bicycle derailleur and we're calling it a synchro mesh transmission, uh, there's a much confusion because our words and their words don't match up. And really, it's our fault. Uh, because not all SCADA is SCADA. I know, it's kind of shocking, isn't it? You've heard a lot about SCADA talk. SCADA this, SCADA that, SCADA in the news. And the reality is SCADA is big things. SCADA is things like power grids. Uh, they're highly geographically distributed. Um, they're dispersed assets. So think water supply systems. Think large-scale power grid. If, if, if it isn't on a pylon like this, it's not considered big. Uh, wooden poles do not a power grid make. Uh, it's things like railways, it's things like long distance pipelines. So the kind of pipeline that stretches from uh, Alaska to the rest of the United States. That kind of pipeline, okay? Um, these kinds of assets, they occur all over the place, uh, but largely you wouldn't notice them uh, they, because they don't take up a lot of room. Uh, you can have a pipeline that goes by your house. There's actually a major pipeline and you wouldn't even know that it was there because it's buried under the frost line. Are in the southern United States, I guess you don't have frost, you just have swamps and deserts, so I guess they don't bury them there. Um, you've got a bunch of interconnections, and it's this interconnection part that becomes very, very important later on. You've got centralized data acquisition, centralized control, sometimes, but not always, and these things are critical to protect uh, the overall security of the system. And right there, we sort of hit the first time when we've got words that don't match, because when control systems people and SCADA people talk about system security, they're not talking about information security, they're not talking about IT security, they mean something completely different. They mean, is this going to blow up, fall down, or kill people? So they're talking about the security of the system as an ongoing running entity. And then a bunch of consultants come along and say, hey, we know all about security. And we're off to the wrong foot already. These interconnected systems all end up with the central management problem. And well, in reality, data center management is something that IT security is not too bad at. We've been spending the last 10 years doing exactly the same thing we did the year before, but we're not too bad at that. So remember, large systems geographically dispersed and used for huge control undertakings. That's SCADA. Okay, firing a plug of oil that has gas in front of it and gas behind it. So you can think of it as this unit that is moving through a pipeline, followed by a little gap and then another plug of a different kind of fluid. And you're starting to see you've got, you know, the same kind of complexity that you would expect in what happens when model trains go bad, only very large scale, big stuff. Control systems, on the other hand, are little things like chemical plants and nuclear plants and manufacturing facilities. This is not SCADA. This is industrial control systems. You're going to find them in oil and gas refineries. You're going to find them in manufacturing plants. You're going to find them in all those places that you would find if you watched the Discovery Channel and learned how it's all made. That's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. You find them in automotive production. You find them in food production. Mm, donuts. You've got a lot of little independent capabilities that sometimes get knitted together in interesting ways, but more often than not, there is no real functional knitting between the two, or between two different control systems in the same organization. Uh, you know, the, the production line for donuts is not one production line. It's not one machine. It's a number of different machines that do different jobs. There's a certain level of orchestration, but in large part, there's no requirement for that kind of orchestration. What, is the, what the requirements are for really relate to business process management stuff. It relates to, get me back information about how many donuts I used. Get me back information about when I need to reorder more glazing for the donuts. There was no dessert for lunch in my world. So, donuts on the mind. These control systems that come, you guys are not laughing. You're all in a pasta coma. It's terrifying. <laughs> Uh, these multiple integrated subsystems, so you've got things like programmable logic controllers, which are astonishingly simple machines. Uh, they do things like ladder logic. Anybody remember learning ladder logic in first year comp sci? 
Yeah. You ever seen it again? Only in control systems. Right. So you got to dust off that book that you studied a few years ago and try to remember it. Um, you're usually finding these um, in places where you wouldn't expect to find a, a, a computer. You know, it, it wouldn't occur to you that there's going to be a computer here. And in order to get information back from them, uh, you know, this is a steel manufacturing plant, to get the information back from them, you're taking and adding on networking devices to ladder logic controllers that run at cycles per second, sometimes even cycles per minute. So a very strange kind of world. And that's industrial control systems or distributed control systems. This is not SCADA. Okay? This lack of understanding, it, it, it's kind of a critical lack of understanding, but it's an important lack of understanding. Um, here it doesn't matter. We're, we're temporarily going to step aside and we're going to say it doesn't matter whether we're talking about SCADA or we're talking about control systems. That's kind of irrelevant for the moment uh, because when it comes right down to it, the computers aren't the thing that's being controlled. This is like almost everything else in InfoSec, if you sort of pay attention to what you're actually up to. Um, the computers are not the reason why you're, there's even an involvement for you. They're almost secondary to all of this stuff. And it's kind of hard to get through the, your head that the systems aren't as reliant on the computers as you think. Um, exactly what you would expect would happen, happens. Edna falls into the reactant vessel and the system stops because that's what it's supposed to do. So if you take over the control system and you're super lead and you can figure out what coil 13 does on Modbus TCP and you manage to completely break the system, it stops. That's what happens when the computers break. So this is data. This is what you're getting when you're looking at protocols. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at, you know, EIP, DH+, Profibus, D, DMP3, ICCP, OPC. It doesn't matter. It's a data blob. And, and you guys understand data blobs, right? You can do protocol deconstruction until the cows come home. And you're perfectly fine with that, right? Everybody knows how to install Wireshark and everybody can do, yeah, nods, pasta comas. The data doesn't mean a whole lot, though. When it comes right down to it, you've got this kind of huge problem. You've got no map to the process. You know, in, in, in the data, you can't see the process. You can see outputs from the process. You can see that sensor 14 has a reading of 132. Where's sensor 14? What does it do? And what does 132 mean? Is that Fahrenheit, Celsius, inches, pounds, megajoules? You can't know. This process map stuff becomes really important. A protocol stream is just a bit stream. In large part, these are all serial protocols that have simply been mapped into IP packets. It's complicated, but it's not that complicated. You need to see the mapping or find the mapping or figure out a way to build the mapping. But, you know, I'm not kidding myself. There are severe rock star reverse engineers out there, right? One, two, there's probably 10 of them talking here. I mean, they're really, really, really good. And what do you think they could do? They can break the computer, sure. Modbus TCP has this great command structure built into it. It's absolutely terrific. You can send it a command that says, stop, followed immediately by a command that says, and also stop listening. You broke it. Yay. But can you make the computer do what you want it to do? Can you figure out what that 132 means on that sensor and know that if you change it to 142, badness happens. You can break part of it. You might even be able to break all of it. But can you break all of the controls that are in that system? Or just the computer controls? Yeah. Um, there's a whole additional system built into any control system.